Now we're going to take a moment to look at when should you use which method, disk method, washer method. They're both good methods. And oftentimes you can solve a problem using either method. Um, and it's just up to your personal preference or which whatever choice. So uh, some general guidelines and understandings is you should always always need to graph the region and understand the solid of, ro of rotation that you've generated. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be hard to figure out what to do. So you always need to understand your shape and your region. Uh, once you understand that, general guidelines are for disks and washers, sometimes you have to do multiple regions to integrate. And if you're in a situation where you have multiple regions to integrate, shells might end up being better. Maybe it'll just give you a single integral, although maybe it'll be harder and the multiple integrals will have been easier. Uh, don't know until you set them both up and see. Shells, sometimes you can run into a problem with shells. Sometimes there are problems that cannot be done with shells. And we'll see an example of that shortly. Um, if the top minus the bottom are defined, uh, if you can't define top minus bottom, you're gonna have to most likely use the disks method. Okay, so our first example, two examples here. Without deciding what to do first, our first example is y equals x, the region bounded by y equals x and y equals two minus x and the x-axis, we're going to rotate it about the x-axis. Okay, so give ourselves something like this, just kind of a nice big x-axis there. And what are we going to get? Okay, y equals minus x. Um, well, give yourself two tick marks in the positive x, and just two tick marks all around is a pretty good idea in this case. I don't know, maybe we'll need it, maybe we won't. Okay, so y equals x is the perfectly diagonal line, so that's like that. And we're going to do the x-axis is going to be involved. So I feel like it's going to be there. And do, 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 do. y equals 2 minus x starts at 2 and goes perfectly negative diagonal. OK, so what region is trapped in here? This region. If you extended things, even though I didn't, you'd see that it's still just going to be that region. And what are we doing to this region? We're going to rotate it about the x-axis. So we're going to generate not a square a kind of a, a diamond shaped thing that has round edges when we rotate it. Okay, so I see this and I say, all right, this seems like something I can do. So let's try and set this up using, let me see how many slides I have here. Two slides for this example, cool. Let's set this thing up with the disks method because I can kind of imagine that a disk might work for this. Okay, so just the two dimensional region we need now is going to only be the first quadrant up to height one and over to x value two. Uh, one diagonal there and then one negative diagonal there. And a disk, well, we're going to start here at zero and we're going to generate these disks. That's going to give us this. Swing that around. That's going to give us just a single disk like that. And that's going to be good until we get to one. Because when we get to one, what happens? Then all of a sudden, our the top of our disk is going to be defined by a different function. And so we'll have to kind of rethink it from there and go from, from one to two, again, in the x direction, using a different thing. So what are these things? Well, this is y equals x. And then the blue one's going to be defined by y equals 2 minus x. So if we just set this up using the disk method, our integral would end up being two integrals. We'd have to split it into two, call it region A and region B. And I'll use green and blue for the regions, respectively. So our volume would be, first, the integral from 0 to 1 times of pi times my radius squared. So the radius in this case is just defined by x quantity squared uh, dx. That's my first integral. To that, we're going to add our second integral, which goes from, picks up where we left off, from 1 to 2 in the x direction uh, of pi times my radius squared, which is 2 minus x quantity squared dx. Neither of those are too tricky, something we could absolutely do. Um, but I leave the calculation to you. This is just about showing that we could maybe do this uh, either way. So let's take a look at shells now. So once again, for shells, we'll draw a quick picture. 
same picture, height of one in the x or y direction, distance of two in the y x direction. Got my variables all mixed up. So what are shells gonna look like if we rotate these things around the x axis? Well, they're gonna be, a shell is gonna look like that. And as you spin that around, it's gonna generate our shell and look something like that. So this tells me that I'm going to integrate from zero to one with respect to y. So my variable of integration is gonna be y and everything needs to be in terms of y. So um, using, yeah, there we go. Okay, so this first line is y equals x. So this point could be x comma x, but it could just as well be y comma y. And the lower part, the part we're interested in is it's this height that we're looking at is in the x direction. So we're interested in the x direction and we want it in terms of y. So our bottom is gonna be y. Now the second point over here, since this line is y equals two minus x, well that point could be x comma two minus x. But if we solve this thing for y, we could kick the x to the left side. So x equals two and then subtract that y over minus y. This point could equally well be, this point could equally well be y and the x region could be given as two minus y. So the top of our radius is gonna be that. Summarizing that, we, what we have is we've figured out the height of our shell. And so top minus bottom in the x direction, the top is two minus y minus the bottom is y. 2 minus y minus y tidies up to 2 minus 2y. We still have to figure out the radius. So what's our radius going to look like in this case? Well, since we're slicing in the x or the y direction, our radius is going to start at 0, and our radius is going to be determined by how far you are along in the y direction from 0 to 1. So it's just going to be y. So radius equals y. Put that all into our integral. We're going to integrate with respect to y from 0 to 1, 2 pi times shell radius. Radius is equal to y. And then height uh, is 2 minus 2y two dy. Either one is doable. They're both reasonable integrals to do. And I leave it to you to calculate these both out and see that they will give you the same exact answer. If you're not feeling like it, at least look at the textbook where it is an example in our OpenStax text. So one more example to look at. That last one showed us that we could do, uh, we could use disks. We just had to break up the integral into two separate uh, integrals to generate the entire volume of our region. Uh, whereas when we did it with cylinders, we could just do it with one integral. So now example six, let's see what the volume of this solid is. We're gonna rotate the region bounded by y equals four minus x squared about the x. And so the region is bounded by y equals four minus four x minus x squared and the x axis. And we're gonna rotate about the x axis as well. So let's draw our region. Nice picture of our region. What's it gonna look like? I'm gonna do a two dimensional drawing, a reasonably accurate one here. And then we'll, we'll draw kind of a a sketch of what the three-dimensional shape is up here to save a little bit of space. Well, four X minus X squared is going to be a parabola that's kind of been shifted and flipped upside down. And it's gonna go between zero and four on the X axis. And sure enough, it actually goes up to four height on the Y axis. And so you kind of draw yourself a nice little parabola looking thing, an upside down parabola there. Okay, so if we rotate this thing about the X axis, what are we gonna get? rotate this thing around, um, you're gonna get, so what's a disc look like? It's gonna give you kind of, it's gonna look like an egg. It's gonna give us an egg. So we're gonna generate the volume of some, some sort of egg-ish shape. So first we will set this thing up with the disks method. Well, so what are we gonna need? We're gonna start at zero and we're gonna start slicing. We're gonna work our way all over to four. And so, volume is equal, we're gonna integrate from zero to four. We're gonna have dx here and it's pi times our radius squared. So what is our radius here? Well, this point, that point is given by x, however far along we are, 
in our integration process, x comma 4x minus x squared. And it doesn't, the bottom is zero, so subtracting the way 4x minus x squared is going to define the height of our radius, 4x minus x squared. And again, this is doable. We could calculate that out. That's great. So let's try and set this thing up with shells. You know what? I think I have enough room to do this on one slide. So we'll see if we can get the comparison a little easier to look at. Again, four, four, nice flip over parabola, some form of scale here. So what would a shell look like? Well, a shell would look like, since we're rotating around this x-axis, we need to take our shells parallel to the x-axis, the axis of rotation there. And if we got a shell like that, we would rotate it around and it'll give us some kind of a cylinder like that, like we're used to. So that looks pretty good. So we're going to integrate from zero to four. So the shells method is going to give us volume equals uh, integral from zero to four of two pi times the radius times our height and then dy since we're integrating with respect to y. Well, the radius starts at zero and goes up to however far along the axis you are. So our radius is just y. So now let's take a look at this height. All right, so we need this thing in terms of y. Okay, so over here, a little bit of algebra. y is equal to this curve, this, this graph is y equals 4x minus x squared. y equals 4 x minus x squared. Well, that's not an easy thing at all to solve for x. In fact, I, I don't think you can necessarily uh, solve this thing strictly for x. So what, what, what can we do? Well, that's one problem, but that's not the real problem here. The real problem is that this top point and this bottom point are defined by the same function. If you could, like just pretend we could solve this thing and it ended up being x equals the square root of y plus 5y squared minus 7 or something, right? That's not at all correct. But imagine it was. Then your top minus your bottom would be that exact expression. It would be the same function solved for x minus the same function. Ignore that. That was that was bad. It would be the same function solved for x minus the same function solved for x. And if you did that math, your height would always end up being zero. But we know that this height of our slice can't be zero. And this is an example of when the shells method fails. When the height of your slice is defined by the same function, you cannot use the shells method. You have to use the disks method to calculate your volume. And that's that.